Hi everyone, thanks for clicking on today's video. I'm so excited to bring this to you. It is on Isaacson and I's love story. And this is actually a podcast episode. So what you guys are seeing is the video interview of us doing the podcast. We always post our podcast on the typical podcasting platforms. We'll have a link down below. Um, but today's special because you guys get to see the video of us doing it. So if you like seeing video versions of the podcast, you want to see more of those on our channel, give this a thumbs up because we can kind of gauge whether or not um, this is something that you want to see. But yeah, so without further ado, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Uh, it was very fun to do this interview with Isaac, and I hope that you feel encouraged um, by it and edified. So thank you for watching. Bye. Hello, and welcome back to the Coffee and Bible Time podcast. I'm your host, Taylor. I know you guys were not expecting to hear that. Mentor Mama usually is the one hosting our amazing podcast. Um, she's really the person who has made it what it is. And so, Mentor Mama, thank you for giving me a chance to um, take stage today because I think that this podcast is going to be a special one. It is going to be a once-in-a-lifetime podcast, if you will. Uh, because today we're going to be sharing me and my special guest, Isaac Mitchell, about our relationship and the story of our relationship. So I would like to welcome Isaac. Hello. Isaac, how do you feel being here on the podcast? I feel great. Thank you so much for having me. It's kind of fun talking into microphones, isn't it? Yeah. I always enjoy it. Unless it's in front of a group of people, then I don't like it. Oh, yeah. Then it's a little bit. But for recording purposes, so. I like it. Nice. Amazing. I'm so glad to have you. It feels very special. We're not actually together in the same room right now, so we're kind of doing this digitally. But like I said, today we're going to be sharing our story. And as many of you guys know, those of you that have been in successful relationships or maybe you've been in several relationships that are not with your person, you know that love has its ups and downs. And I believe that our story... um is no different. We had a lot of ups and downs, and I think that there's a lot of power in sharing our story and anybody sharing their love story and how God has worked through that, how God has really worked through the brokenness of our own depravity. And really, I think any successful relationship is all by the grace of God and by his strength. And yeah, so needless to say, I think that we are so thankful, so grateful that love ultimately prevailed in our relationship. And love is a gift from God. So I'm really glad to be able to share that with you, Isaac, um, especially despite a breakup. So mm -hmm. today we're going to be talking about our story. And here's kind of a tiny little breakdown preview. We're going to be sharing how we met. I think we're going to share a little bit of our rose-colored glasses phase, if you will, and uh, how they came off, how the rose-colored glasses came off, and of course, why we chose to break up. Um, for many of you guys, you know, we did end up breaking up in the middle of our relationship, as well as what we did during that time, and then how we knew it was time to get back together. And of course, now that I am recently engaged, which did I mention that? That's probably... I don't think you did. Oops. Well, you know what? Here, I'll say this. If you follow us on Instagram, then you know that I got engaged. If you don't, then hey, I'm engaged. Who'd you get engaged to? You. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really thankful. Let's just say I've been waiting for this for a long time. I knew you were the one immediately. But anyways, <sighs> I Why will just you explain how you came to that conclusion oh i totally will <laughs> i totally will but i want to say really quickly yeah we'll talk a little bit about the proposal and then plans for the future so that's kind of what we were thinking about going for the direction of this podcast um but why don't we first start off by sharing how we met isaac you can take the stage sure well um i had just uh with my friends at moody bible institute we all had just created uh, a record label. Um, there's a lot of on-campus talent at Moody. 
Um, and at the time, and I think it's still kind of like this, if you're not on worship collectives or part of the music department at Moody, it's kind of hard to play instruments. It's kind of hard to be in a band. It's kind of hard to do all that stuff. Um, and we wanted to change that. So we launched our kind of like own record label type thing. And, um, our goal was to just make sure that that on-campus talent that wasn't being seen or utilized was going to be given recognition. Um, so you were one of our first, um, takers, if you will, uh, part of your, (laughs) part of, part of your deal was that we would, uh, produce your song that you had already written and also film you a free music video with that. Um, and we would, we also collabed with people from Moody Radio to make sure the production was as good as it could possibly be. Um, and I think that worked out, but, um, so you were, came to do your song, Anxious Devotion, uh, which is a great song. And that was the first time I'd heard it. And that was the first time I'd ever met you, um, or seen you on campus. And I think at this point we're like two and a half semesters in maybe two semesters. No, not two and a half semesters, um, two and a half years in, I think. Um, do you remember? I feel like it was the end of my, it was the end of my sophomore year. Cause I didn't know yet that I was going to graduate early. Sure. That makes sense. Um, yeah. So it would have been the same for me then. Cause we were the same grade. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so I remember you walking into that room we were all ready to rehearse the first recording and the first music video shoot Uh, and I remember thinking you were pretty Um, but also I heard you that you had this coffee and bubble time thing and I was like I have no idea what that is I never heard about it Um, and so I was like is this girl famous but that was a very quick thought I didn't really (laughs) dwell on that too long uh, cause then you sat down and started singing and I was like, Oh, this is a really good song. Um, I was really so, nervous to sing by the way. I, I felt complete imposter syndrome <laughs> being there. I mean, well, it all great. worked out. And just so everybody knows that song is still, it's still out there. It's on like basically anywhere where you can stream music. And if you want to see Isaac's amazing talent of him recording, the music video that's on youtube too so (laughs) you can look through isaac's lens as he's recording literally yes it's true um i helped film that video and was kind of like the visual director of that video but also i edited that video and i remember distinctly before i even knew like i liked you before any of this stuff happened with us um I sat down and cried editing that video because it was such a beautiful mm-hmm. song. Um, and it was just a great experience to be part of that. So that's kind of our imish, initial, like how we met. Mm-hmm. But later that summer, this was the spring semester when all this was happening. And so the end of the semester um, slash end of school was like maybe a month away at that point. Like it was pretty close. Mm-hmm. And so – uh, I was living on summer or I was living on campus over the summer and I was um, working a lot. And I, and during that time I was like having a really good summer. I was like really content in my singleness. I mean, I had tried like the semester we, I had asked someone out and it did go far and that's okay. Um, I wasn't that upset about it, but because I was really content with my singleness and content with where I was in my relationship with the Lord. And um, I just had decided to, to reach out to you when you had launched your, the music video for anxious devotion. I just sent you a quick text and was like, Hey, I really loved working with you on that video. It was such a honor. And um, I guess we never stopped texting since then. <laughs> yeah. And Pretty that's much. the start. That was, that was the start. I will say that although you and I technically didn't really hit it off during the music video, I still feel like we look back with a lot of fondness over the fact that we met during a creative project over music because him and it's I true. really him and I really liked uh, music individually 
and mm. then together we also like making music he's really good at um writing music parts and i like i like writing music parts too but i also like to do kind of more of the lyric stuff so it's been fun to do projects with him as well we have a song out our song that we did um also when we were at moody it's called neither do i and that's also out too shameless plug (laughs) um but yeah that's that's out too and there's also a music video for that i think on my youtube channel but anyways Mm -hmm. so yeah like he said like if we want to fast forward here we um we started dating that summer after we talked for a little bit and i will say that there was definitely a period of rose colored glasses and i say that because Mm -hmm. i think everybody has that in the initial phase of relationships and i feel like I remember it's funny because I had a conversation with your mom earlier on in our relationship and she asked me like, oh, this is – I'm not literally quoting her, but I'm s- summarizing. <laughs> Basically like, oh, like have you guys had any problems together yet? And Oh, yeah. That we was were really out. early on in our that relationship. That was really early on. And I remember sitting there being like, no, we haven't had any problems. And I was kind of feeling like, oh, no, should I be having problems? And all that to say, I think – she was just gauging like like how deep have you guys gone i think the more time you've been in a like relationship how real with somebody, is this yes i think actually yeah. that's exactly what it is because i mean i couldn't say anything at that point i was like we don't have any problems and and i could hardly think of anything that was wrong even about mm-hmm. you as a person or me and i think that came a little bit later but our i do feel like our relationship uh it it progressed quickly and um we i feel like the rose colored glasses came off maybe i mean probably right around the time it does for a lot of people but when do you think they came off for you for me mm, probably around the six to seven month mark which Mm -hmm. i think is very normal yeah i think that's around this period that most couples start Mm -hmm. fighting maybe don't make it period or something like that um but at that time i had never i didn't have any thoughts of like oh we're starting to fight or argue more often that means we need to break up i never had that thought um back then like at that point um because i knew it was pretty normal um but we were also working through a lot individually just with school your personal life Mm -hmm. back around that time so yeah i feel like it's a tricky tricky time i agree not to cut you off peanut um <laughs> no, you're good i was gonna say i feel like i ha- i remember us having a conversation where we're like is it normal to be f- be arguing this much or is it is it normal for like the like really intense warm and fuzzy feelings to be gone right now because it kind of felt like we settled into just like a regular relationship you know where it felt very routine, very safe, I'll say. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think also there were, for me at least, nerves of like, oh no, we've only been dating for six months and we already have fights. Like, I I don't think I really grasped that that was normal and that fighting is okay. Like you had some doubts or maybe not doubts, but like, red flags i feel feel like i was concerned yes yeah yeah like oh no we're fighting but here's what i'm also gonna say gently is that and maybe i'm just not following the right type of influencing type things but i feel like not a lot of christian influencers talk about the rough patches of their relationships and Mm -hmm. so it kind of makes you worried especially going to a really intense christian college like oh no, our relationship isn't all rainbows and butterflies. We're struggling with, you know, learning how to have good conflict management and how to be the best people on our own, even before we come to each other. And I struggled, I think, with being really clingy. Um, yeah. Well, I think we both kind of did. Yeah. So but I also, think- there's a, that's a product of us having different upbringings as well. Like yeah. you – were you grew up like not really fighting a ton at all Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with your family um and i i love my family to death but like we fought a lot Mm -hmm. so maybe not like a lot a lot but like i grew up 
you know, fighting with my siblings and having arguments with my parents. And yeah. I was a troublemaker, so I like had to <laughs> get used to conflict pretty fast. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not saying I know how to do it well at all, mm -hmm. but there's just a that difference just in our upbringing. Right. You're not afraid and of I conflict. Think, yeah, not really. And I think it was around that time of like six or seven months of our first relationship of or of our relationship to for us to really see that, oh, like I fight differently than you do. Mm -hmm. And just learning how to do that mm -hmm. in a way that is God honorable, which to be honest, we're still figuring out. I don't know if yep. anyone other knows how to do correctly. Yeah. Whether they're six months into the relationship or 60 years into their marriage or something yeah. like there's still going to be you know troubles with their conflict so mm -hmm. and I just want to encourage anybody that feels discouraged in their relationship or past relationships of like realizing that you're a sinner basically and this sounds so basic like yes we all know we're sinners but I think it can be really discouraging to have all these false assumptions and narratives that like a relationship is going to be what completes you and it's going to be totally satisfying and your partner's never going to hurt you and they're always going to uplift you and it's going to be this perfect fairy tale experience to be met with real life realizing you're dating somebody who also struggles with sin somebody that is going yeah. to hurt you somebody that isn't going to always control their temper or we're selfish you know and mm -hmm. so I want to encourage anybody that's going in a re that's in a relationship and they're feeling like man we just can't get things right like God will give you strength. You can ask for help. And I think something for us was we needed a time to take a break. We needed mm -hmm. a time to break up, which is kind of why I wanted to segue into that. Um why did we choose to go on a break or break up and you can kind of talk about that yeah well I mean it's it's pretty subjective between the two of us on our different reasonings mm -hmm. but because technically you didn't break up with me I broke up with you mm -hmm. um and the reason that I did that was a product of a ton of different things that mm -hmm. were just perfect storm of blah is yeah. really what it was mm -hmm. I mean I was coming out of the best summer I'd ever had um, I was doing my internship, um, at a place that I, I absolutely love the work I was doing, but throughout the work there, I kind of realized that like, I was not perfect in terms of like my sin issues that I was dealing with. Um, and I felt a lot of shame with that. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I was dealing with that personally, but then also you were going through the worst relate like not relationship worst summer of your mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. and that caused a ton of anxiety between both of us where i'm going to a nine to five internship every single day but i have to take time away from my work in order to talk to you about your anxiety or help you through things and i really did like i enjoyed doing that because i liked feeling that I was helpful and I liked feeling that I was like helping you towards something better, but that something better never really came. Mm -hmm. Um, and it kind of just became this pattern of like, I am going to work and I, I took a lot of community time away so that I could be with you and talk to you. And we were doing long distance. So like that, that was tough for sure. Um, I have no doubts about that. Um, but at the same time, it was like, I think you were starting to treat me as your therapist. Mm -hmm. um, and that just wasn't a great thing for the both of us. Um, you weren't getting the help that you needed. And I didn't have the capacity to help in the way that we both wanted. And so that on top of the shame that I was dealing with and the guilt I was dealing with between all of that, plus with just a lot of big life decisions coming up in terms of like, we both were trying to graduate early. I needed to find a job. Uh, we were entering on our last semester before our actual college career ended. There was just a lot of things that I needed to figure out um, that I 
was feeling very overwhelmed at the thought of like us continuing down the path that we were going in terms of anxiety, mm -hmm. counseling, like each other instead of actually seeking real therapy or counseling, like all of that on top of each other, I just got super overwhelmed and it got to a point where literally I had gotten off of work or something, or I was right about to go f to work and we were having a, like an argument um, over the phone. And I just kind of decided right then and there, I was like, I, I can't do this anymore. Um, and I regret that every day, that conversation that followed after that, the actual breaking up part was like just brutal. And I felt peace about it for approximately 24 hours before I was like, that was a mistake. I should not have reacted like that. And that wasn't even like an anger. It was more of just like, I didn't know what else to do anymore. Like mm -hmm. I felt empty and I, I was just sad basically. Mm -hmm. And so I, my, my resort was instead of making it better was to just leave altogether and that was the start of the worst semester I've ever had <laughs> the worst three months I've ever had. Like it was crazy. The dichotomy between the best summer worst period of my life right next to each other. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that was my, that was kind of like the initial why. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. I think you, kind of have it spot on and I see everything like every I see totally see where you're coming from and now that you say that I think it's interesting because I did come out of my worst summer ever and into probably my best semester at college after I was still dealing with a lot of anxiety but I feel like God really met me after our breakup um mm -hmm. I really clung to him and it felt like a spiritual revival for me. And I think Isaac is being, he's being gentle with his words about that summer too, because I mean, it was, it was a very unhealthy pattern that I had put mm -hmm. us into. And I, I had massive expectations on him and I was every day, putting continuing to make him feel um broken for not being able to fix my anxiety problems and for those of you that have OCD struggles um you kind of understand a little bit about what rituals are and I don't think I'm the person to explain it very well but um essentially with my phobia that I had that that summer which was causing me so much anxiety I created a ritual or a practice um, unconscious it's not something you know that you realize you're doing but it was for me it was reaching out to Isaac every time that I felt afraid and asking him to pray so I was constantly asking him to pray for me which like yeah prayer is great but the reality is is I didn't I felt so out of control I don't even believe that I really felt like I trusted God in asking Isaac to pray. Cause if I did, it would be, I ask you to pray and I leave it, but it was constantly, can you, can you pray for this? Can you pray for that? But also with that dumping all of my fears and panic onto him mm. and getting frustrated when you weren't always there for me 24 seven. So right. I think you were being gentle, but also I did, uh, I did get counseling help for it. And I did. We both did. And I did see a uh, doctor too, which really helped me um, kind of sort out like what I could do to help me get help from there on. So that is a little bit of why we ended up breaking up. And like Isaac said, it was very painful. It was very painful for both of us. There was a lot of hurt on both sides and mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of miscommunication in the in between yeah. times of we both couldn't figure out how to like communicate to each other in a way that made sense to the other person you're talking about after the breakup mm -hmm. after the breakup yeah, yeah. well yeah. after the i mean after the breakup like literally as soon as i realized that i shouldn't have broken up with you which was like again 24 hours after i actually broken up with you i realized 
that I made a mistake and I, I literally felt like I started Operation Get You Back. Mm -hmm. um, and that was kind of like my entire semester. And I was also in the middle of graduating, getting all my final classes sorted out, part of which was getting my drone license, which is like the hardest test I've ever taken. Mm -hmm. um, and then so studying for that, working two jobs, taking 21 credits on top of getting you back and working through my own emotions and sin issues and stuff like that. Like it was a brutal semester for me, which is why I think it's interesting how you were having like the closest semester, like with the Lord that you've had. And I would say in a way I did too, but it was more, much more of like a lament type relationship with the Lord of just like, why did you allow this to happen? I was complaining, like journaling every day, like I was close to God, but it wasn't like a happy close, if you will. It was more of like a, yeah, I'm torn and I don't know what else to do. Mm. Like, cause I mean, I had a lot of friends come by me that semester, but a lot of my friends at that time were single and it was kind of hard to talk to them about certain stuff because it was like, well, you just don't understand. Yeah. And that's not saying to say that like single people don't understand what it's like to right. be like in a relationship. Like they can still bring a lot to the table and help me sink. Like, and they did, but there are certain things that it's just best to go to somebody who's been married or a mentor who's been in a relationship or something like that. And that's what I really tried to do was I sought out a lot of professors, a lot of professional help to help me get through this. I talked to my parents a lot. I kind of, I feel like I rekindled my relationship with my parents throughout that time, which is why there are so many ways I can see the fruits of our breakup and meaning like, I don't think I would have passed my drone license test without breaking up with you. I don't think I would have done as well in school at, that I did like if we had broken up um, or if we hadn't broken up or something like that. Um, you paid off so, your, you got to pay off college by working all of that time too. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. Like there's just like there was a lot of ways that I can see the fruits of like, yes, it was a hard semester for both of us, but I do think that it was the Lord's timing for sure of like this needed to happen and he really was putting us through the ringer of like, you know. He how... was sustaining us through the ringer maybe. Yeah. And I think he wanted, I mean, I, I, who am I to know exactly what the Lord was thinking during that time? I don't know. But what I speculate was happening was just, it seemed like the Lord wanted to see how serious we were about each other, but more importantly, how serious we were about him. Because I think in our relationship before we were letting, we were just like shut up, shoving him out the window. Like we weren't really living for him with him. Like it was just kind of like, I wouldn't say, I don't want to say spiritually dead relationship, but it was not a like super fruitful relationship yeah. that we had had. And I think throughout, the whole process, I think it was more of like a reset thing where it's like, God was like, you two are the people that I chose for each other, but like now is not the time and you need to figure yourselves out with my help before you can get back together again. And I think that's exactly what he did because I feel a lot closer to you now that we had, I feel a lot closer to, closer to the Lord now. And, you know, I, think that's only because of the semester that we had mm -hmm. well, well the said. season we were in i think that you did a great job of explaining that and actually that's a really key point that i forgot to mention is that we we struggled to bring our own personal relationships with god to each other like we were living our own spiritual lives separately it was hard to figure out a way to merge that together in a way where it felt safe for both of us to share how we were feeling, not feel judged, not feel like one person's trying to be the teacher to the other person or not one person's trying to play the role of Holy Spirit in the other person's life. And it's still, yeah. uh, still a something that we're learning every day as well. Um, but, it's true. I mean, because we still have a lot of things to work on that was also a product of last semester a lot of trust issues yep. a lot of communication issues that we're still working through which again a lot of stuff is like that, that stuff is still normal mm -hmm. like 100 percent. but 
it still shed light on the areas that we needed to work on. Yeah. Um, and it's stuff that <laughs> everyone needs to work on. So mm-hmm. totally. So now moving forward, um, I'll just briefly fly through this, but uh, at the end of last the fall semester, which I ended up taking the semester to be intentionally for the Lord. It was an intentional semester of singleness for me. Um, so I didn't really attempt to reach out to Isaac at all. Um, but at the end of the semester, I definitely felt like my heart was softened towards coming back to him, which is interesting because I felt very content in God the whole semester. But at the end, it was like just something was stirring in me, like to reach out to you to see if we could reconcile more deeply than I was ready for in the middle of the semester or even beyond that or before that. And so, yeah, at the end, we kind of had a conversation with each other where I reconciled or I kind of apologized and shared my side of things. And then he had his time where he apologized and shared his side side with things. And I think there were was an effort from both of us to, you know, rekindle a friendship first and from there see if if that friendship led to something more and it did so then in Mm -hmm. january um i came to indiana to see you when you were living at home for one month before your big move and big job surprised me on my birthday surprised you on your birthday and then we started dating and it really to me felt like we picked up right where we left off Mm -hmm. it felt very natural very natural yeah yep and so um We've just kind of been continuing to grow in a relationship with each other and making an effort to bring God more into it. And Mm -hmm. um, we've had to have like several conversations where it's like, okay, what are we doing? Are we following, falling back into old patterns where we're not prioritizing God in our relationship and how can we change that? And Isaac, you, you've really like led the prayer side of our relationship by making sure that we have a routine of both praying for one another in the morning and then at night and as well Which as I realized we forgot today. Bum, <laughs> bum, bum. Um, yeah, we're not perfect. But then also <laughs> at the end of the night I did, I bought him for his birthday, a couple's devotional. And so we usually do that every night. It's like got one thing to do every day and we go through that. And yeah. So my next question for you is, When did you know, since getting back together, that you wanted to propose to me? And when did you know, like, you know, I was the one you wanted to spend the rest of your life with? Well, I mean, I don't know if there's a specific time. But for me, it's like I only date slash dated people with the intent to marry. I believe that's the right way to do dating. I don't believe in you know, finding people to just chat with, waste time with. And then it's like, Oh, if something happens, it happens. I don't think that's a very loving way to date someone. Mm -hmm. So I pursued you with the intent to marry, or at least the intent to consider marriage. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, Because if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. I mean, I've dated a lot of people with the same intent and then in the relationship realized, all right, I was wrong. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's, it's, and then it's fine. Yeah. So, I think your intent is to not mess with someone's heart or yeah, waste yeah, their I don't, time. Yeah. I don't think that's very biblical. Um, so I, from the very beginning, had the intent to marry you. Um, it wasn't until like the relationship started getting better, like more deep, um, tying into like taking off the rose colored glasses and continuing to love one another daily was when I was like, all right, I can see myself with you. Um, but yes, I broke up with you and I regret that. But as soon as I figured out that I wanted to get you back, that was, that was basically when I was like, but I wanted to marry you. (laughs) That was kind of like a, Uh but God moment where I was like, but, what about marriage? Like, what about spending the rest of the life? Like I realized I just didn't want to do that with someone else. And I mean, I think, I I think it was pretty obvious, like for me at least 
when I tried getting you back and succeeded, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, did that with the complete intent to marry you. Well. <laughs> and and then the only way, um, the o- or no, the only reason that I waited to propose to you was simply because I wanted to try and find the right time. I would have proposed to you a long time ago um, if one I had more money, <laughs> and also <laughs> if the uh, if the timing had been better. So yeah. I've had the ring for about a month and a half and I just got tired of waiting. So uh-huh. now we're engaged. <laughs> thank you, Isaac. I'm so You're I welcome. keep every when he proposed to me, I just kept saying thank you over and over again. And he said, why are you saying thank you? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. I, I'm so thankful. I'm so. Well, you said you said that you were thankful that I chose you, which yeah. I thought was a sweet response. Oh, Thank you, Isaac. Yeah, I was thankful that you chose me and um sure for any of you guys that have taken breaks in between your relationship um before you got married or whatnot, uh, it does create some trust issues of like, will this person wanna choose me later? And I think um proposing is it's a really sweet and also healing thing to mm-hmm. say like this ring is the beginning of a commitment to you for our, the rest of our lives. So yeah. I'm really excited to explore marriage um, with you and to see more how we can be like Jesus for one another. I already feel like I feel definitely the dichotomy between being in a relationship has most definitely 110% brought out the worst in me. I, I don't <laughs> think anybody has ever seen me worse than you, but I also believe that it's an honor. Rela- relationships <laughs> give you the opportunity also to become extremely sharpened, to see all the ways that you need to work on yourself, and to lean in to God's help because you need it in a relationship. Yeah. You realize just how sinful you are when you start to date somebody and there's just something about singleness where you can't see how sinful you are until you start dating it's true that's yeah yeah there are a lot of glasses that come off (laughs) it's like uh yeah yeah so anyways i'm just so thankful um that we are able to explore marriage and see how we can become more like Christ with one another. And also, uh, I can't remember who it was that said this, but somebody recently to us was uh, praying for us. Um, and they were praying that in our relationship, we would come to be a safe person to help heal with. And I know it sounds a little cheesy, but when you get into a relationship, like a lot of your issues come up and, or and a lot of your partner will trigger your issues to come out. But it's Mm -hmm. kind of like when you choose to to be with that person forever, you do really want to become a safe person for that, for them to grow and to heal and to have a flourishing relationship where you can see the worst in each other and know that you'll still choose one another. And grow and heal so i'm excited to have you be that person for me isaac me too there you go i think marriage is on the horizon hopefully Mm -hmm. 2025 um and yeah thank you everybody for listening thank you isaac for joining us today on the podcast my pleasure really appreciate it if you guys want to continue to keep in touch with our everyday lives feel free to um check out our youtube channels we have two we have a vlog channel coffee girls and a main channel that we like to post a lot of videos on there to help you guys learn how to grow in your relationship with god so with that being said thank you for listening to this almost 40 minute podcast it was worth every second i love you guys and i love you peanut all right see you in another week's vlog bye you mean podcast podcast 
Oh no, you can tell that I am not in sync with this mentor mama. You can have your job back. I think you do it best. We love you all. Bye.